Hello boomers, it's us, your millennial and Gen Z children. We've been hearing a lot from you lately that we are complainers and that we are crybabies. We like to think of it as digitally protesting or addressing problems that are piling up, making our future uncertain, but I'm gonna run with complaining right now so we can get on the same page because I wanna give you a snapshot of what the millennials and Gen Zs are living on a daily basis. Number one is gonna be the job market and this looming recession. Just last week, nearly $3 trillion left the stock market because of this fear of a recession. That's putting uncertainty on millennials and Gen Gen Zers, especially the younger crowd who is just graduating college, who just invested tens of thousands of dollars and now can't find a job, or even if they just got a job, they're in fear of being laid off. That's creating a little uncertainty. And with this uncertainty, it's creating a whole slew of problems. And the biggest one on the top of the list is our birth rate. Even the Wall Street Journal recently did an article that our U.S. fertility rate was lower in 2023 than any year since 1979. And I wanted to do some research and figure out why this is. But I did a poll on my Instagram and 2,200 people answered this poll and four 49% of people who can have children right now are not choosing to do it because of the fear of the economy and because of their finances. And another 17% said that they're not having children because of the uncertainty of the future. That could be the foreign wars, that could be our political divide, democracy, AI coming for our jobs, or just the economy getting worse in general. But 66% of people who can have children aren't having children because of finances and our fear of the future. That's not a healthy place to be or a healthy place to operate. That's why the Gen Zers are even called the hopeless generation because they're looking around even at the millennials who've got 10 years on them going, you guys are struggling, so it doesn't get any better, that's not a really good look, and that's why we're trying to fix this. The other thing that's really burdening us, what I think everyone's pretty aware right now, is the housing market. In the past four years since the pandemic, the housing prices have gone up 40 to 60 percent, which is wonderful for those of you who own a house because your net worth went up, you can now borrow more money if you want to, but for every single person who did not own a house before this happened is essentially locked out. It has become a luxury. In most places in the country, you need over $100,000 to even consider buying a home. And even then in some cities, that's still going to make you house poor, which isn't a good idea. You need more like $130,000 to $150,000 to buy the average house to feel good about. So how many Americans under 40 are really making that kind of money? It has become a luxury. And because housing has become a luxury, where are people forced to live? They're forced to rent. And if they're forced to rent, they're forced to pay whatever the rent prices are. And rent prices have gone up 32% since the pandemic. So even your Gen Z or grandchild or your child who's 29, 30, 32 years old is living in a two bedroom apartment with a bachelor's degree with two children and cannot buy a house. That's not the order on how this works. If you're a 19 year old just starting off in your life, there's never been a time in history that a 19 year old hosting at Applebee's was complaining they couldn't buy a house. They know they're just starting out, but when you've got a 32 year old couple who went to school, who paid off their debt, who are having children and can't afford a house, it makes you wonder, well, then what's the, the motivation to go make $150,000 a year and do all that work and take all that sacrifice if you can't even comfortably live and you can't buy a house and you can't do anything? So it makes you wonder, this is something that needs to be addressed. So we need to keep having a conversation with each other so that we can address these problems because without addressing these problems over the past 30 years, look what happened, boomers. No one fixed the housing supply when they saw that it was a disaster in 2012. They allowed private equity to come in and start buying up houses. That could have been stopped. They could have done something about the social security disaster way earlier. They didn't. They saw that the birth rates were starting to go down. We saw that the college debt was continuing to increase and people weren't getting jobs at the value that they should have. The national debt, you watched it over for 30 some years go from $4 trillion to $35 trillion and no one did anything about it because you didn't have the ability to communicate like we can. Now we're calling out the bullshit. We just want to live a chill life. We just want to buy a house, have some kids and hang out. And we want to go on vacation for four days and not sit around and go, this is going to end soon. Am I going to have a job when I get back? How am I going to pay my mortgage? You don't want a generation full of hopelessness because the worst thing we can possibly do is not have children because then it f***s our population. And secondly, when people are stressed, their mind isn't open. We need our minds to be open to creative ideas and innovation. There are so many brilliant ideas that are just locked into these stressed out minds because people don't have time to sit on a park bench and dream or create. This is why we need to make a change in this country and we need to work together. So we're going to keep complaining, but let's change it. Let's not call it complaining or or, or whining. Let, let's call it digitally protesting and addressing the problems looking for solutions. Boomers, we love you. I know we're living in two different realities, but let's keep communicating and we can come together. Uh, thank you all for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one.